You know, so basically I've been fishing offshore all day long and, and it doesn't seem like those fish out there on those rock piles and hard places, they're just not quite there yet. You know, there's a lot of weed growth around here and, you know, you hear about drop shotting, you know, rocks and rock piles and stuff like that all the time, but you don't hear a whole lot about utilizing a drop shot in weeds. And so I'm set switching up my whole setup right now from a, you know, a small little, little uh, drop shot hook where I nose hook in open water to now um, the Nico finesse hook that I'm going to utilize to Texas rig and actually be able to utilize, fish that in the weeds and not get hung up. So I'm going to show you real quick here what I'm talking about the big thing about this i always like to kink it up make sure that line is going through that uh, that line tie the right way so when i kink it up see how that bait sits perfectly and that hook is is, is pointed upward um, towards the top of the line that is a really big ordeal you know if it's kinked to the side or something else you will you straighten it up and pulling on it because that line's through that eye is going to really allow you to have uh, that bait set up the exact way you need it to so where you don't miss those fish another thing that's really important on this setup is i am running braid you know you have a 10 or 12 pound leader but i'm throwing nano braid and and the thing about this i've thrown a lot of different braids you know out there but the nano braid for me I'm actually even throwing eight pound. This is eight pound nano braid right here. Um, it's a lighter line. It's a li little bit lighter, smaller diameter, cast better. And the thing that I don't, you know, like about a heavier braid, especially on a spinner rod, is it blows around a lot in the wind. Um, this line really handles well. It casts well. And people always ask me, they're like, you know, are you worried about breaking off? And I mean, I've caught six, seven pounders out of trees um, down on Lake Chickamauga with this setup. So um, that is the, the least of my worries. Yes, it's going to be a little bit, um, you know, it'll have a better chance of breaking, but I haven't had any issues with it. And it's just phenomenal as far as being able to cast a little bit further and for that bait to act right. Because at the end of the day, if you have a lot of drag on your setup, you know, you're using too heavy of a line, especially on the main line, um, you're gonna have a lot of issues with wind and, and you're gonna have a lot of issues with that bait not acting um, the right way and not looking natural enough. So that's something that's really important, definitely something that, that I, I recommend on this setup right here. So now that we got this all set up, I'll show you what I'm talking about, pitching this thing out there in some weeds. So I'll just cast him around. And, and you'll see I'll even parallel the weed line. If I feel like, I feel like I'm right on the edge, so I'll even parallel this weed line right here, casting around and just trying to make sure, you know, there's not a little area where those fish are set up, you know, and I'm trying to feel, you know, where you would feel the rock, you're trying to feel the weeds and you're trying to feel, okay, where you get to a clump, you might leave it next to that clump a little bit longer and shake it because that's where that fish are gonna live at. You know, he might be sitting around that clump on the backside or when you feel it, it's real thick right there. Okay, there's a little thick little clump. I'll pop it over that edge, clean it off. I cleaned him off, let him fall back down, and I'll pick up and just shake it. And if that fish was there, he's gonna bite that. So, you know, that's really a part of what, you know, I'm trying to do is trying to, to feel those little, in, those irregularities on the edge of these weeds that you're not gonna necessarily see with your electronics. Hopping over all those little clumps. Oh, there's one right there. He's got it. Oh, feels like a better one. Eh, not a big one, nope. High flyer though. Chewing on it. There must be a few of them in there because when they eat it that deep, <laughs> they aren't wanting, they aren't wanting their buddies to get it. That's for sure. There's two of them. Let's see if we can catch another one. I mean, yeah, you'll see, I'll pitch it in there. I'm letting it fall and all it is is grass, a little grass edge. I assume they probably got some bluegill hand up in that area. And I'm bringing it over that grass. So like I'll bring it, I'm on top of a clump right now. I'm probably in two, three, four foot of water, clearing it off and letting it fall back down. Get back to the base of those weeds. So I'm gonna take it there, shake it a little bit. Cause I feel like that's the strike zone. There he is. Just like that. That's a better one for sure. Right there, every time, the roof of the mouth, corner of the mouth. I'll tell you what, 
drop shot is not just for rock piles and wood it's awesome little deal for some grass that little dude right there is a chunker it's pretty awesome man it's always fun to set the hook on a few bass let's let you go buddy thanks for the bite you know as you can see this is sort of a specialty hook there's a little resin keeper right here that keeps your bait up there you know specifically for texas rigging or threading a, a bait on there you know this is not necessarily a wide gap hook this is actually a straight shank and anytime you can get away with a straight shank hook in my opinion on anything whether it's flipping or drop shotting your hook up to land ratio is going to go way up um so that's just something that you know i've been using this hook for a little while and it it absolutely tkos them and you know you're just you know it's simple just texas rigging this thing you know you can't necessarily do this to all soft plastics you know there's some drop shot baits that are a little bit thicker but this one right here is perfect um in that situation and you're just you know you're able to have something a little bit fatter heads be perfect for texas rigging it gets thinner towards the bottom um where that hook can really penetrate that plastic and get those fish out of there so that that's the deal guys that is the absolute deal you know, and one thing that I will say with this hook, when you're Texas rigging it, you want to set the hook. You know, you're trying to, you know, this is a Texas rig setup. This is not a, you know, a, a, you're not just nose hooking this where you're just pulling into them. I'm not setting the hook hard because at the same point in time, I'm not using heavy line, but I am using a little heavier than normal. And I'm just shaking that worm down through there. And when one does bite it, you know, you reel down it and pull back. I don't really jerk set a whole lot with this technique, but I will, I will pull up quite a bit of line and that's important because you're trying to penetrate that you know you got to go through some plastic to to actually catch that fish it's not like a, a normal there's one right there i'm gonna pull back he's down that grass got him out of the grass there we go that's awesome and you'll see when I flip him up here in the boat, he bit it. I waited on him a little second. Now where's that hook? That hook, I'll pull this out just so you guys can see. That hook is right in the top of the mouth. That is exactly, I don't know if you can see that. That is right in the top of the mouth. That thing, it's over. Like, unless you break him off, I'm not going anywhere. And that is what I love about that thing. Definitely a pretty cool deal. So don't tell everybody about this technique. It's definitely one you want to put in your back pocket. And when your buddies are flipping jigs in the weeds, pick up the drop shot. Trust me, it might surprise them. <laughs> it might catch a few of them. They might be like, uh-oh, what are you doing? Drop shot in some weeds? I'm telling you.